This is basically what anyone with a 140, so a 1973 or 1974 Volvo 140, would have to do if they have a 240 gauge cluster and wants to install it in their car. I've been planning on tackling my R Sport gauge cluster. There's a few things wrong with it and I thought I was going to have this elaborate plan where I'm on the bench and I'm hooking it up to the DC power supply and testing out all the warning lights and the gauges and stuff. But um, I spent last night comparing wiring diagrams and I kind of wanted to go through the process to show what I ended up having to do. Let's start with this. My car's a 1973 Volvo 140. This would also apply to a 74. In 1975 is when the 240s came out, but looking at the wiring diagrams, I'm not sure that there's too much of a difference. And so when you skip to 76, um, I think even through 80, but at least 76 through 78, that's where I noticed the biggest differences because on a 73, 74, 140, there's actually a total of three gauge cluster um, plugs, where on a 76 through 80, 240, that reduces down to just two. And so I knew some things had to change. This book has seen better days. The important thing is looking at the wiring diagram. It's probably going to be too small to see in the video, but you can look these up. Um, you can buy these books still new. They reproduce them. You can sometimes find online versions too. Up in the top corner here, these are the three plugs for the gauge cluster. And so there's this round one, there's kind of a half circle shaped one, then there's a two pin one. This is the one that we actually don't use. The R Sport gauge does have a two pin plug, but it's for something else. You can't plug this one in because it has a little tab that's supposed to go into a notch that's not on the R Sport cluster. These are all numbered and down here in the diagram, this is mostly all the gauge cluster warning lights, the gauges, and they all have small numbers by them corresponding to plug number 20, which would be like the big round one, pin number nine, find the pin. And then you can see this is going to light number 35. And you can find that over here. 35 is the warning lamp for battery charging. So you kind of have to track down through the diagram what all those numbers are. I started with my car. It's a 142 from 1973. And I drew out the plug, drew out the half circle, the two pin plug, which doesn't exist for the R Sport gauge. Let me be clear. They made R Sport gauges for 140s and then 240s. There's a few different part numbers of these gauges. They even made them for 164s. And one of the things I've noticed, at least the, the one 164 I have seen, there's actually a oil pressure, uh, like an oil warning light down here, which I really wish I had on here. The original 140 gauge has it, but for whatever reason, the R Sport gauges don't have it. They do have the gauge, but that light certainly grabs your attention. I went through here and tracked down the pins, where they go to, um, whether it's like the power or the ground side of the light or the gauge or whatever it is, noted which ones are vacant. Also try to note like this pin is the ground side of the light, but it is powered by 94 slash two, which would be down here, which is power to several warning lights from fuse number five. Went through all of this and noted this out. Then I found my 140 diagram online. The only free one I can find, and I'll link to it in the description, is one that is all Swedish. Basically would find what I needed, would translate it through Google Translate. Some of them are pretty, Pretty easy to see. Fasten seatbelt lampa. Indicator lampa parking's broms. Basically, it's one of the parking brake warning lights. Some of them are pretty out there and certainly needed translating. But anyways, did the same process for the 240. There is a two a two pin plug, but it's a different plug. Um, it doesn't have that little tab to index it. There's a separate little box. Um, that basically triggers the EGR 
white. It basically, at a certain number of miles, this little box closes a switch, which then turns on this light. I don't have that box. Well, I do have that box, but I'm not gonna hook it up. I had my 1973-142 diagram, had my 76 through 77 diagram with details, compared them side by side. I came up with my own here. The They use different numbers for these plugs, depending on which one. I just named them A and B. I took this, wrote down what they should be based on the 240 wiring, and then what the color should be based on the 140 wiring. I then noted with stars, which pins are different. And then these minuses basically mean that I, I'm not using them. What actually changed? On this plug, pin number one is blank. Pin number two is to the parking brake handle. Three is blank. Four is for the fuel gauge. But on a 240 bar sport cluster, one needs to be the parking brake. So I had to move it from two to pin one. And then from the plug that I got rid of, I had to move pin one, which is the ground, got moved up to um, a new pin, actually. So on a 142, this pin, which on a 240, they actually refer to as pin A. On a 140, it's blocked off. So I drilled this out and then shoved a new wire in there. And that's where the chassis ground from this plug we got rid of goes into. So pin one on the half circle is now the parking brake wire. Pin two is where the power from fuse five moves to. And then the new blank pin A that I was just talking about, that becomes the ground. Number two up to number one. And we move these two wires up into that half circle plug. So after doing all that, I took my sheet of what the 240 pins should be and what the 140 wire colors are and looked at my harnesses to make sure, did I have all the right colored wires going into the right pins? The good thing was I did. The problem I was having was the parking brake light wasn't working. And what concerned me is on a 140, all of the warning lights that are down below, these only come on when the thing is engaged. When you turn the key on and the engine's not running, the charge light comes on because it's not charging. Um, the brake failure and the brake parking brake lights, um, they don't come on unless you have the parking brake engaged. With a 240, there's actually some diodes and things in the gauge that are a little bit different. So when the key comes on, all of these lights, or at least the warning lights, light up. Kind of like a modern car. When you turn the key to the on position, you have the check engine light will come on. Um, the, you know, you'll see like the oil pressure and a handful of other warning lights that come on, basically so you know the light is working, but it doesn't mean that issue is relevant that doesn't start until the engine is actually running. Once the engine is running, all the lights go out. Um, if your parking brake is on, that should still stay on. But that wasn't working. So I started getting concerned. Is it just a parking brake problem? Or did I wire something wrong? Because it was it's honestly like kind of hard to tell when they are all lit up when the key is in the on position, but none are lit up when the key or when the engine's running, it, it's supposed to make it so you know that things are working, but it made it hard to know if I wired it right or not. That's a long way of saying once I went out and checked the wires, everything was good except for that parking brake light. The pin that I had to move one over wasn't seated all the way. It actually was falling out of the harness. So I went through all of that thinking there was a larger problem. But I think the good thing is just that pin had backed out when I went to plug it in. So my hope is if I go and install this, it should hopefully work. 
All right, so I'm out in the garage, got the gauge cluster. Um, we've got to hook up the lights separate. We've got to hook up the volt gauge and the oil pressure gauge. It has all of its own individual wires. The tech has its own wire. And then our round plug and our half circle plug that we repinned. These are the two main plugs, the round one, that half moon. So it was this hole that um, you either have to drill out or get the plug from the 240 cluster because in the 140 that is plugged. I use the 241 so I can lock it in there. This is the parking brake wire. This is the one that actually was not seated all the way. So I'm hoping I will hook all this back up, plug all these little wires. We'll start it up. We'll see if everything's working. meter and check one thing. I want to double check I've got the right wire and the right pin because there are two solid black wires. So I've got my multimeter and I have it set so it'll beep anytime the connection's closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove one end in that pin. So it's in that pin. Okay, that's good. I'm touching it to a bolt over here. I'm going to pull the parking brake. Nice, it works. I was second guessing myself because this wire, I can see it going down to where I know there's a cluster of just grounds. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna be grounded all the time, but we should be good. And sure enough, that pin slid back out. So I wanna pull it out and try and figure out why there's actually two, three pins that are all wanting to fall out. It's probably the ones that I have repinned. They have little tabs on them that have to bite into a little lip inside. So I'm bending the tabs on some of these up a little bit more. There we go. That plug is in. It is tight, but it looks like everything is seated how it should be. So now, We'll slide this in the rest of the way. First thing I'm gonna check is I'm gonna turn the lights on and just make sure that these all glow. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it into the ignition position. We won't start the car yet. We see the tack sweep, that's from the Link ECU. It's programmed to do that. Uh, we see the fuel tank coming on. We see volts. Um, we're sitting a little low, so hopefully things start. We see the lights that we expect. So the parking brake, brake failure, the amp light, and normally that EGR light come on as, uh, as a test. Kind of like a modern car, like I mentioned, where the check engine light and a few other lights come on just to make sure that the lights are working. That's how this 240 cluster works. That's not how a 140 cluster works, but that's all built into the cluster and the way that the circuits and the diodes and all that are set up. Before I start it, I'm just gonna check turn signals left. Oh, right, okay. So that's not, that's not a great start. So this is always one of the fun things about cars. I literally have not done anything besides cycled the lights on and then back off. Um, with the lights off, the turn signals work, high beams work, overdrive light, you know, we can get everything going. When I pull the lights out, everything is still working. So um, I thought, oh, maybe something's wired weird. But, you know, it is possible sometimes to get things on these old cars just into a state where not all the contacts are connected or things are aren't grounded right. I don't know, who knows, never know. Things are working, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna go ahead and try and start it. I 
might grab a jump pack and put it on it real quick. I'm not sponsored by anyone, but a little jump pack like this, this one specifically is a DB Power. I got it off of Amazon. They make several different sizes. It's just this little tiny guy. You plug it into a wall to charge it. It has some little jumper cables that plug into it. You can also charge your phones off of it but they're super handy and the batteries last a long time. Um, I've used it on my diesel Toreg. Um, it can do multiple jumps between charges too. So I'm gonna put it on the car real quick. And I'm gonna open the garage door because I can already smell just from cranking. It smells a little fuel-y. We're back in here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Fuel pump's going. We got our warning lights are all on, which is correct for this state. Let's see if it starts. Try once more. There we go. So we're running and all the warning lights are off, which is great. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Now, the real question, if I pull the parking brake handle, will the parking brake light come on? That was the whole thing that made me pull this cluster out. And there we go, it's on. Let's make sure everything else works. Stern signals, high beams, overdrive light, regular lights all turn on and are working awesome all right so i got the gauge cluster back in we got the tram on the steering column back together and the little insulating sound deadening panel underneath back on so that wraps up everything with the interior now the odometer still doesn't work that's going to be a bit of a larger project where i'm going to have to take the gauge apart once again see if there's a broken gear may end up just shipping out the speedometer and having someone else Fix it. We'll see. I don't know. I'm kind of cheap. I don't like paying for that sort of stuff, but I just don't really want to take it apart. Especially if I don't know what gears it really needs. All right, we're back. I'm in the car again with the lovely Ellen over here. We're going to go cruise by Hummel Park. There's kind of a nice windy road that goes somewhat along the Missouri, goes up to Boyer Shoe through Fort Calhoun. It's like almost 60 degrees out, so it's really nice. And the Volvo's running really good. out um, but thankfully the gauge cluster ended up being a simpler fix than I thought basically just had to push that pin back in um, some other time I'll do a full history of the Volvo uh, at least what I know of it and since I've had it hope you all have a good weekend and until next week we'll see you later yeah he's got a little bit of a valve cover leak